Hi guys, hope you're doing very well out there. This is DJ Semi giving you a little update series on how to set up the Denon SC2900 units with Tractor Scratch Pro. Last couple of weeks now, I've been getting quite a lot of uh, comments on the forums, various users who are trying to get this uh, particular unit up and talking with the, the software from Native Instruments and struggling in one or other areas in when trying to do so. Uh, I have already given a couple of pointers and tips on how to get this up and running but nothing really from a very sort of basic step-by-step -step perspective so hopefully the next couple of uh, video sections are going to give you a pointer from start to finish and you can't get much more of a start to finish down with the actual opening of the box itself so um, without further ado um, obviously you can see the unit just here so first thing you're going to have to do is obviously get out all the key components as you can see there we've got you know, power leads got the manual in there um, seriously advise if you can to actually read through it it's actually very useful um, but obviously you're watching this video because you're not really uh, down to the reading kind of stuff uh, CD in there as well if you actually want to get the um, the engine software up and running with this particular this particular bad boy but obviously um, the main unit is just inside here uh, let's see if we can grab this out okay it might help if I put the camera down for just two seconds. Okay, so we're back here now. So obviously a little bit of a serious packaging around here. And there you have it, one brand new... Uh, then on SC2900 unit. Okay, so we're just going to set this guy over here next to his brother. And uh, actually, before we cable this guy up, just so you're aware what it looks like on the back here. So now we've got obviously USB point B, power on and off. Uh, and your RCA cables just over on the, the right hand side there um, Ethernet port just over there if you do fancy actually plugging in um, the two units together so they can share link data across to each other in terms of queue points that kind of stuff sharing USB keys but uh, we're not going to be going into that mode we're going to be looking at tractors so if I just pop this guy back down there okay so um I'll explain the rest of the, the setup in a second, but basically before you do anything with the actual tractor software you want to get all these cables up and running, okay? So obviously power is quite important, Ethernet cable if you actually want to do the link feature I mentioned before, that's not required for tractor, but you know, just you know, if you actually want to get into that mode it's useful to have that there. Uh, this is the USB-B cable, this is what's going to be taking the MIDI data out from the Denon unit and into the the Mac, we'll see that in a bit. Or the PC, depending on what computer you're actually using. And obviously your RCA cables here, so we'll start with the basics. RCA cables. In they go, let's start. Let's have a look, what should we do next? Let's do the power. Okay. Uh, and what else have we got here? Here's the uh, nice and shiny Ethernet cable. Again, this is just for the link facility, not required for tractor, but in case you don't want to use the CDJs in a tractor mode and you want to just use the storm or engine mode, then that's obviously great, great to actually link in there. Uh, USB cable. We're going to pop that just in there, in that orange section just there quite a snug fit. Right, so those are your four basic cables. For the use of the tractor, the only three you need are the RCAs, the USB-B cable, and obviously the power itself. 
there's blue Ethernet cables if you're using the, uh, the standard link mode or the Denon units. Now, just so you can see, these RCA cables, the setup I've got here, I've got a Denon mixer, okay? Denon mixer X1600, and that's certified to work with tractor. These RCA cables are actually going in, in this particular instance, into channel four of the uh, the mixer over here. So, obviously, you just cable it up as if you're gonna play a, a normal a normal set and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, the other Denon unit over here, been cabled up exactly the same way. That's actually going into channel one of the Denon unit over here. So, so far so good, I have One, two, three pieces of download equipment. I have a MacBook Pro, which is uh, gonna be receiving all the inputs from these guys. I haven't turned anything on yet. I just wanted to try and emphasize this cabling section here. So basically RCAs, USB, and actually the, uh, the power cable itself. The same over on this unit as well. Obviously make sure the RCA goes into the particular channel that you actually wanna be playing off. Um, and uh, it's very important that the USB cables, not just from the Denon units in terms of the SC2900s, but also from this particular Denon mixer, they all physically need to connect to the MacBook itself, yeah? And the MacBook now, obviously, that only has two USB ports in there. Um, so that's not really gonna help you when you've got three units. So in this particular instance, you need something along these lines. It's probably a bit too dark for you to see that there. Let's put a bit of power on here. You know. That's better, a bit more light. Okay, so I've got a USB um, hub here. This one's uh, a Belkin uh, seven port USB hub. Um, obviously I've got a bit you know, of other stuff connected up at the same time. Um, but at least of the seven, I can use three. In fact, these three here to actually connect these three Denon hardware units and then this actual usb hub there's a wire you can probably just see it there wire which i've got running through and it actually nestles just here so that is how my macbook is getting this particular feed of data in fact i've just told you a slight slight bit of an error there what i've actually got here and this might affect some of you guys who have been complaining about distortion when you've got your uh, audio going um, through a tractor um, There's actually a difference in these two USB ports in terms of the bus inside of the computer the the channel as it were that the data is going down Okay, so as far as you're concerned with this particular setup the key component of the entire thing is the sound card that you're going to be using to drive your audio, okay? As much as possible, you need to make sure that that sound card has direct access to the MacBook's uh, USB um, audio components, okay? So the way I've got around that in my particular instance, I make sure that this particular Devon USB cable, I don't know if you can see it there, it's actually this gray, gray cable there. It's actually just uh, going to USB section there. Now that gray cable is going straight up and is actually going right directly into the furthest most USB port of its own. So although I was talking to you a little bit before about a USB hub, all I've got going through the USB hub is all of the sort of auxiliary devices, the, the sort of the controller type things, yeah? No sound card is actually going through that USB hub. The sound card, which is in this case my Denon mixer, is going directly into the MacBook Pro. And I did a bit of research, you can check on that how to do this yourself, but I did a bit of research to work out which of these two USB um, ports is um, not being you know, used by things like this iSight camera, um, which can, uh, from research uh, and experience, uh, can interfere with the audio feed signal coming through uh, from your sound card. So just a tip, if you've got any sort of distortion problems, um, try and make sure that your sound card, whatever that may be, I mean, again, I'm using a Denon 1600, if you're using an aggregate device or the SC2900 to drive your, your audio, try and get it going directly, if you can, into the uh, the MacBook to avoid any uh, unnecessary sort of conflicts with other things that might be going on the, on the, uh, the machine. Anyway, so again, uh, I've got uh, a Denon SC2900, I'm just gonna power this one up. Um, so you see that one just uh, lighting up there. Uh, nice little ring 
of uh, colours. Yeah, very good. Same over here. Uh, and I'm also going to do the uh, the demo mixer. And while I'm doing that, what we should see over here on the MacBook. Uh, in fact, I don't want to do that, do I? I want to do this instead. Right. Sorry, not pressing the button properly there. Right, let's try this. I've just gone to the Apple sign. I've done system preferences. Ba -ba -ba. Things just loading up. Okay, so we're going to go to sound. Right, so I don't know how easy that is for you to see there. Okay, right. Again, I've gone through this before in another video if you want to see this in a bit more detail. But basically, I'm just checking here that in my sound section, um, under the uh, the output uh, section there, not input, I want to know about the output. At this point in time, I can see you know all the sound cards that the Mac can see, and one of them is this Denon X1600, okay? So um, I know as a result now that this uh, guy here is talking to the Mac. Um, that's obviously quite important if I want to be able to route any sound through it. The MacBook has to be able to see that in the uh, the output section there, okay? Um, let's get rid of that for a second. <laughs> yeah, someone's birthday tomorrow, good stuff. Um, anyway, right, so uh, yeah, what we've got here as well, um, I'm switching this back um, to the sound card set in there. And oh yes, right, okay, so what I need to make sure, can you see this is the first time I'm turning this machine on and um, it's asking me to confirm what ID I need to give it. So as far as the computer is concerned, it can see that there's um, devices um, linked, but it needs to know in terms of uh, an identifier which one is which. So let's keep things simple. Let's call that Denon 1. Let's call this one Denon 2. So to do that, just need to go to the uh, utility uh, settings. Okay. Right. Right, so he's two, he's one. Okay, so what we can do now, I'm going to go into MIDI mode, which is this uh, last button on the right here. Once you're into MIDI mode, just turn, select, and say OK. And now, just up here, we should see very shortly. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that pop up. Let's try and zoom in a bit there. I've got an SC2900 just appear underneath. The Denon X1600. Okay, so I know now that the computer can see this particular Denon device. So if I do the same over here, if I go in MIDI mode and say OK, it says PC linked. And over here now, I can see there's two um, devices connected to the MacBook. Okay, so, so far so good. All right. Let's just close this down. Right. So again, very, very basic stuff. One Denon, second Denon. I've got this particular machine here, uh, which is going to be my sound card. Um, and all of these are routed through, um, well, at least two Denon units are routed through into a USB hub, which in turn is going to one of the USB ports on the MacBook. In my particular case, I've set deliberately a dedicated connection from the X1600 mixer into the other spare USB port just to uh, minimize any distortion problems. Okay, uh, so that's the first section there, just showing you the cabling, getting these units obviously connected to the mixer, and I'm assuming you obviously know how to get the mixer connected to your, your speakers and everything else. So um, that'll do for this part of the uh, tutorial. Next section, we're actually going to get a tractor up and running and show you how to configure the sound and all your settings for use with tractor.